There are a few themes in board games today that seem to come up time and time again. Zombies, superheroes, dungeon crawling, pirates. Pirates, in particular, are one of my favorite game themes. The idea of a swashbuckling adventure in the high seas with Blackbeard or Captain Jack Sparrow just sounds fun. Today on Game On Video Reviews, we'll be looking at a pirate-themed game that's not about pirate ships or eye patches or walking the plank. It's about what happens after you've returned to port with your pirate ship stuffed with treasure. This game is all about getting your fair share of the booty. In a game of booty, players will be dividing up a deck of treasure cards, hoping to collect the sets and combinations of cards that will get them the most points, and therefore the victory. One player will be assigned the role of Quartermaster, who will be in charge of creating shares of treasure to offer to the other players. Let's take a look at the setup of the game. To set up the game, place the five island tiles on the table in a circle, leaving room in the middle for the booty cards. Next to the islands, place the commodities market board and the rank board. Place the four commodities tiles on the market board on the two row. Each player will also have a rank tile in their player color, and these will be placed randomly onto the rank board to determine starting player rank. Then take a number of rank coins equal to the number of players and place them next to the rank board. Each player will receive 15 might flags in their player color, as well as two random legacy tiles. These tiles are kept secret and may provide extra points at the end of the game. Finally, shuffle the deck of 108 booty cards. Multiply the number of players by 3 and deal that many cards into the center of the table. The first card should be face down, but the rest of the cards will be faced up. I'd recommend sorting the cards by color. At the beginning of a round of booty, a quartermaster is chosen who will be responsible for distributing the booty cards to the other players. The player ranked first on the rank board gets the first opportunity to be quartermaster. If they accept, they receive the quartermaster tile and place their rank token onto the tile. If they decline, the quartermaster position is then offered to the next highest ranked player. If all other players decline, the player in last place automatically becomes the quartermaster. Then, the quartermaster will look at the cards on the table and will put together a share to offer to the other players. The share must include one of the rank coins, but it may contain any number of cards. So let's say that quartermaster selects the ink and silver, a bible, and a monkey. Once the quartermaster has assembled the share, he indicates this by knocking on the table. In rank order, the players then have the opportunity to accept or decline the share being offered. If a player accepts the offer, then they take the cards and place them in front of them. Then they move their rank token to the space in the right column of the board that corresponds to the rank coin that they just received. If the share contained any might or trade route cards, then those are resolved immediately. And I'll explain the, how that works in a minute when we go over the card types. If a share contained the face down card, then the player who receives it may look at it, but keeps it face down until the end of the game. Again, unless it's a trade route or a might card, in which case you'll have to resolve that immediately. If the player declines the share, it's offered to the next highest ranked player. If all players refuse the share, then the quartermaster must take the share for himself. If the quartermaster took the share, then he's out of the round, and a new quartermaster is selected the same way as before. Otherwise, the quartermaster will prepare another share to offer to the remaining active players. This will continue until everyone has claimed exactly one share of the booty. If there's still cards remaining in the booty deck, then players will begin a new round. First, all rank tokens are moved from the right column to the left column of the rank board. Then, the players will select a new quartermaster, who will deal out a new set of cards and offer the first share. Player can, uh, play will continue in this manner until the entire deck is exhausted. In order to understand the scoring in booty, we need to go over the card types and how they score. Let's start with the yellow cards. The yellow cards are simply treasure cards and are worth either one, two, or three points each. The blue relics cards are each worth three points. However, you only score unique cards of each type. For example, if you finish the game with three parrot cards, then the first one is worth three points, but the other two are worth nothing. 
The green commodities cards score based upon the point values that are shown on the commodities market board at the end of the game. These values start at two points each, but can be changed during the game through the use of a trade route card. Whenever a player receives a trade route card in their share, they will immediately adjust the value of two commodities on the board, increasing one by one point and decreasing a different one by one point. The flag cards work in conjunction with the letters of mark cards. The flag cards are each worth one point. Letters of Mark cards also feature a nation's flag, but do not score points on their own. Instead, they score one point for every flag card in a player's possession that does not match the flag of the Letter of Mark. For every flag that does match the Letter of Mark, the player loses four points. The Purple Way of Life cards come in two types, Rum and Bibles, and they're each worth two points at the end of the game. However, a player can only score one type of card, either Rum or Bibles, but not the other. The red mite cards are used to raid the islands on the board. When a player receives a mite card, they will place a number of tokens on the island boards equal to the mite value of the card. Each space on an island board is worth a different number of points at the end of the game. However, there are 25 total spaces on the islands on the board and only 24 total mite points and cards in the deck. So therefore, there will be one island at the end of the game that is not completely full that island will score no points for any of its tokens at the end of the game. In addition to the points from your cards, players will look at their two legacy tiles and select one of them to score at the end of the game. For example, the Poet tile allows you to score both Rum and Bibles on your purple cards. The Veteran allows you to score the Might tokens on the incomplete island that would usually score no points. And the Collector allows you to score some points for those re redundant blue relics. There are 12 different legacy tiles in the game. Finally, the player who has the largest total number of might tokens on the island boards will get four points. In the case of a tie, each tied player scores two points. The player with the most points is the winner of booty. Negotiation games, in my opinion, are kind of a tricky genre of gaming uh, because the fun of those types of games usually is dependent upon the personalities of the people that are sitting around the, the table. And so you might have shy personalities or uh, kind of very strong or gregarious outgoing personalities, people who are good at wheeling and dealing. And so those folks tend to do better in those sorts of games. And you know, shyer players uh, or less talkative players might find themselves left out or not doing as well. One interesting thing about Booty is that uh, this is a game where the negotiation is definitely there, but the actual mechanics of what happens are very simple, and for the player who's not the quartermaster, uh, the only decision they have in the game is, are you going to accept what's been offered to you, or are you going to decline? And so, um, you know, that, that decision is based upon looking at your board and saying, well, are these cards going to help my score? And then there's also sort of a push your luck aspect to it of, well, if I decline this and hold out for a better deal, am I going to get that deal? And am I going to be able to convince the quartermaster to give me uh, the better cards that I want, or do I want to go ahead and take it? You add to that the fact that there's the rank token uh, that is included with every share. Well, now uh, part of the deal is, is uh, where you rank the next round and how uh, much of a chance you might have to be the next quartermaster. And if you really want that, then that's going to be a really attractive thing. So there's a lot to think about, but the decision of take it or leave it is very, very simple. Now the quartermaster in the game has a, a whole lot more to think about because they're putting together those shares and trying to determine who gets what. And so there's a lot of strategy uh, in that in that you sort of have to read other players and look at their boards and see what kind of points they're going for and then try to put together attractive deals so that they will take them and not leave you stuck with something that might not help you. Uh, but you also want to save back the best cards for yourself. So uh, if you end up being the the last person to take something that you don't end up getting left with the scraps. So a, a whole lot of little things and little strategies and intricacies in this game, but the mechanics of it are very, very simple. And I found that this uh, was a very enjoyable game that I had. we had a whole lot of fun with. My group, uh, we played uh, with six players and um, I think with six players, it works very, very well. It plays three to six. I think with more players, it's better. Um, and the scoring of the cards is, as I went over, is not really that complicated. The different colors um, that make a lot of sense as to how they score. So, uh, so I think it's a game that can actually be brought out with non-gamers and they can really enjoy it. Again, because of very simple mechanics and you know, maybe need a little help with the scoring and that's it. So, um, so even though I think it's a gamer game, um, I think that it's something that can be uh, also mixed in with non-gamers, which I think is always a plus in gaming when you can find games uh, where you can bring folks into the fold. So, 
So I, I think it's a really a surprisingly great game, um, and I have a, had a great time with it. I'm really looking forward to getting to the table uh, several more times with my game group, because I think if you play it more than once, uh, you really start to get a, a feel for the role of the quartermaster. That's the part at the very beginning that seems, seems kind of confusing of, well, do I want to be the quartermaster or not? I don't know if it's a good idea or not. Um, but you sort of figure out over the course of the game about where you want to be in that, in that rank order to get the things that you want. So it's a really fascinating game. I like it a lot. Um, I think my only complaint is about the components and this is a really kind of a Mayfair problem sometimes that uh, you know really good gameplay I think this is a maybe a new designer here this is um Alexander Kobian, and um, a great game, but the, the washed out artwork, the, the tiles the, uh, are very cheap cardboard, the tokens are not really great, the, the cards are okay, I guess, but it's just kind of blah. If this had really amped up components, then this would be just a top notch game that I think would be on everybody's list. Uh, as it stands, it's a really solid game that's a lot of fun, so don't let the outer presentation fool you. And if you're looking for a good light negotiation game, you can't go wrong with booty.